welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Terry White, worldwide photography evangelist and Creative Cloud, Creative Cloud Principal Director of Creative Cloud Evangelism. <laughs> so uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for joining us. And if you were here last week, you kind of probably saw things didn't go that well for the stream. There were all kinds of technical issues. I tried everything I could to fix it. And at the end of the day, it just wasn't fixable on that stream. I don't know if it was a YouTube, Behance, whatever kind of problem. But um, I did something after the stream for you guys. I went and redid it. Like I re-streamed. Now, I couldn't do it on Adobe Live because, of course, it's programmed content and there was something after me. But I went ahead and recorded it on all my channels. So if you follow me on YouTube, uh, Twitter, Facebook, whatever. And for whatever reason you missed that stream last week, you can go rewatch it because I rebroadcast the whole thing from scratch live. So we had a great one at the second time around, no technical issues, no glitches whatsoever. So if you missed last week, just go to terrywhite.tv. You can go watch last week's stream if you missed it. All right. So in this week, <laughs> I'm recording it too. So that way, if something were to go wrong, I can just repost it. I don't have to redo it. So I just plow through it, keep going. And anyway, so for the people that weren't here last week and say, what are you talking about? Welcome. Uh, today, we're going to be taking a look at how to work with backgrounds, all kinds of tips and techniques, not just masking, not just changing the background, but kind of everything, even creating backgrounds from scratch. So all kinds of new ways to do that as well. And um, we're going to work in Lightroom, we're going to work in Photoshop, we're going to work across the board doing background work for the next uh, 52 minutes. All right, so with that said, a uh, couple housekeeping rules that we do every week. If you're watching this on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, great, welcome. I see David over on Facebook, welcome. Um, you can hang out where you are, but if you want to participate in the main chat, the one that I, I have to pay attention to, that's over at b.net slash Adobe Live. That's the main chat I'll be looking at. And um, <laughs> someone's asking, where's Adobe Muse? It was discontinued back in 2018, 2019, some 2017 maybe. Uh, so it's long gone. Sorry, you got to move on to something else. Views is, I, I can't predict, but I'm going to guess it's not coming back anytime soon. All right. So with that said, um, head over to b.net slash Adobe Live if you want to check out the main chat, the one that I'll be paying the most attention to. If you, uh, if I see your question like the one about Adobe Muse in the other chat, I'll try and address it whenever I can. I miss Muse too. I, I, I was using it. As a matter of fact, uh, true story, I went to go edit one of my sites. I had like two sites left over in it. And because we no longer have Typekit, we have Adobe Font. So the Typekit integration's broken in it. And I now have to literally stop using it because it wouldn't even let me make a change and upload the site. So that was my hard cutoff a week ago, and I like have to just start with something else now. Um, so I miss it too. I, I was a you know big Muse fan. It's gone. Sorry. All right. Anyway, with that said, let's dive into some backgrounds. We're gonna start off with some simple stuff that you know you can new in Lightroom and all that. Then we'll get into some tips and tricks and some fancy stuff. I'll say and removing backgrounds and all that stuff. All the stuff you think about with backgrounds. Let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so let's uh, pop over to my laptop. To my laptop, there we are. And I've got Lightroom Classic open. Like I said, I would show you some simple things first. But before we even do a background, there's one thing I need to show you guys. And it was something I overlooked in the new features. So I did a new features video on the people masking. I did how to put the people masking on your iOS devices, mobile. I did um, follow-ups to that last week when I talked about all the new features, but there's still in all three of those videos, there's one thing I missed. And I just, I missed it because I didn't know it was there. I didn't see it right away. And once I saw it, like uh, earlier this week, I actually learned it this week. And I was like, oh my God, this is going to make my life so much better. And I got to show you guys in this class. So this is one quick little addendum to last week's class and all the videos I recorded on the new features. So let's go into this particular image. I've showed this image before. This is by um, our very own, um, I'm drawing a total blank on her name. <laughs> She's the photographer for this image. Hang on, if I, can I look in the, uh, in the, 
metadata. Maybe her name's here. Katrine Eisman. Sorry, I was drawing a blank on Katrine's name. Uh, so Katrine Eisman uh, did this photo, and it's one of the photos she submitted for people to be able to use and play with tutorials and all that for uh, for working in Lightroom. So great. And there was one thing I showed you guys in, in you know, all the other videos, and it was a technique about uh, using the new object selection. So the object selection is under masking, and it's right there, objects. And with the object mask, you can go in and it, notice it defaults to a paintbrush. So I could go in and I could uh, start painting if I wanted to select this dress. And I was painstakingly doing all of this and going all the way around and, and making a big brush. And don't, you don't have to stay within the lines. You just kind of have to give it an idea of what you want. I think if I let go there, it'll figure it out. And sure enough, it figures it out great. And you can go ahead and then start making changes to it. That's the way I showed how to use this tool. And obviously it works that way. But let me show you the way I'm not, I'm not going to be using it that way very often because I found the better way. I was telling the story about how I uh, asked for the object selection tool. I said, Last year in October, I said, you know, the masking's great. Select sky, select subject would be awesome. I said, if I could just have the object selection tool, I would be uh, amazed if I could like have that. And, and, and she kind of winked and said, not right now, but maybe later. And sure enough, this year it came. I didn't realize that you don't have to use the brush. Like I literally just missed this whole thing. So if you go into objects, there it is right there. There's what I want. The rectangle, like in the, in Photoshop, when you use the object selection, you have a rectangle selection and a lasso. In Lightroom, Lightroom Classic, Camera Raw, you have a brush and the rectangle. The rectangle is so much faster. Oh my God, the brush is like, uh, you know, maybe if you need to do something intricate or like get pieces of it, something that's hard to do with a rectangle. But with the rectangle, watch this. I just make a big rectangle around the dress. And boom, done. That's it. It's now selected. So I will be doing the rectangle from now on uh, for when I'm using the object selection. I missed it. Sorry. But now you got it. Now you're up to date. You're, up, you're as up to date as I am with it. I don't know how I like. And you know what it is? I was showing, showing a class how to do this with Lightroom, not Lightroom Classic. And for some reason, the rectangle was still, it was more prominent. So I saw it. And I was like, wait. Is that what I think it is? And I tried it and I was like, I almost fell out of my chair in that class. Anyway, all right, so let's reset this one. We're not gonna use this image for, for what we're doing now. Next, we're gonna go to this image. And we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna start off simple. And uh, this one is um, a new addition to Lightroom as well. I've covered it already, but let's go to develop. And if we go into the masking, um, one of the things that you used to be a two-step process is now a simple one-step process. And if I wanted to select the background two months ago, I'd have to go in, select subject, and then invert that mask to select the background. Now they just said, you know what? Why make everyone always have to do those two things when we could just make it one button? So there's a one button, select background, that basically does those two things for you behind the scenes. It's gonna do the background. So if I click select background, there's my background mask. I didn't have to do anything else. I didn't have to invert. I don't have to do anything special. It's just there. Now, what can you do with that background mask? Well, you can do any of the other things. Like for example, I was changing the color of the dress. I can change the color of the background. Um, one of the things besides changing the color, so maybe I want to make the background more, uh, more like, oh, you know what? Let's undo that, undo that. Let's go down to actual color. And I can kind of make it start kind of trying to get some of that red in there that like her dress. All right. Besides doing that, one of the reasons why, and I'm going to undo that. One of the reasons why you would select a background now that we're again talking about a background class is that your background is just as important as your subject. You're like your subject. If your subject's uh, like a hundred percent important, backgrounds are like 90, 95 to 99% important. Because a bad background will take away from the subject. A distracting background will take away from the subject. A background that's backlit or overlit or lit more than your subject is going to take away from the subject. So your background needs to be as good as your subject. And again, your subject's what, what you want people to look at. So if the background's got any kind of weirdness going on, people are going to spend more time trying to figure out the background than they are your subject. 
So in this case, there's nothing wrong with this background. This background's fine. But what I could do to make her stand out even a little more is de-emphasize the background. So uh, what I want to do is uh, simply go in and just simply lower the exposure of the background just a little bit. So see, I'm like, look at that. Look at the before and after on this. So that's before, after. Just bringing it down a notch, a, a stop or two, makes her stand out even that much more as the subject. So your eyes immediately go to the brightest thing in the photo. So making her brighter than the background it's going to keep your eye on the subject and not worry about the, the vines and all the stuff coming down the wall. So just little simple things. Now, you could take it up a notch if you said, okay, uh, darkening it was great, but yep, makes it pop. That's a great way to put it, uh, Reverb Mike. Uh, one of the other things you might do is, is like defocus the background a little bit more. Now, we don't have uh, Gaussian blur. We don't have any of that in Lightroom, but we do have some ways to blur something or make something less sharp. So to do that, you have texture and you have clarity. And texture is a great way to do it because if you lower the texture, that's gonna soften the image. And it's already shallow depth of field. This is already blurry compared to this stuff being in, in sharp because of the lens. But now you're even making it blurrier by bringing down the clarity and bringing down the texture. Again, only so much because you don't want it to be so blurry it becomes a distraction, but just enough to tone it down so that it, as Reverb Mike says, makes the subject pop. All right, Andrew Kavanaugh over on Facebook. Happy Friday to you as well. All right, next up. Um, so selecting the background, one click now, and then de-emphasizing the background, yes, can make the subject pop. Just bring in the background down a bit. Don't have to do anything. I didn't have to touch the subject. Subject was already lit properly, just made the background less lit. All right, so let's move on. Uh, there's another one here, and I've shown this one before. I'm going to move it up here. Um, another one is this one. I've used this one a year ago when I was showing the masking. We selected him. We inverted the background to get to the background, and we went through all that process. Obviously, now I can do this a lot easier because I don't have to select him first. I just go in, select the background, and now the background selected. And by the way, this, this little part inside of his hand always gets, uh, always doesn't get selected because it, it somehow doesn't see that little part inside of his hand. So anytime something doesn't get selected or got selected and shouldn't be selected, remember you can always add or subtract to the mask that you just made. So if I wanted to add in that little piece under his hand, I could do that. And if I wanted to subtract that little piece under his hand, I could do that. And remember that now you have the ability to add and subtract using the object selection tool. So if you say add in, and you can now say add in objects, and then use uh, the rectangle, which is my new favorite way to do this, I can go ahead and just select the rectangle in that spot. And oh, oh that was a little too generous there. I, I grabbed his hand as well. So maybe this would be a case where I'd brush. So let's go ahead and add in objects and maybe I would zoom in and I would brush and make my brush smaller and you know, you get the idea. Uh, let's do this, make my brush smaller. Yeah, cause there's only a little bit there. And maybe, maybe I don't, oh, sorry, wrong key. Maybe I don't um, use the object. Maybe I just use the regular brush because you know what? You're right. Let, or I'm saying I'm right. Uh, let's undo that one more time. There we go. I went back too far. Hang on. Too many undos. All right. Let's start over. Select the background. Boom. And instead of uh, adding that with the object selection tool, because it's not an object, it's just that little piece right there. Let's go ahead and add it. And let's use the brush. Because we just want to brush in that one little piece. And just like that. So that's easier in this case than trying to turn it into an object. So object selection tool is there if you need it, but in this case, we didn't really need it. Okay, next up, now that we got that background selected, the tip that I showed last year when I showed this image was uh, with the background selected, we wanna make him pop or stand out more. And the problem with this particular background is not that it's so light, it's so that it is, uh, it's um, uh, too hazy. So using dehaze actually makes this background look so much better. 
So just bringing up a little dehaze. Look, watch this. Okay, we're going from zero. Just bring up the dehaze until you like it. And then, now that I got all the color back in the background, making the background look great, we'll bring down the exposure so that he pops. So just, again, subtle adjustments make all the difference in the world in this case too. Yeah, the other hand, I could get in there and do that as well, but you already saw the technique, so just do it on the other hand. Okay, next up. Um, this is kind of a cool technique for um, adding a lighting the background or adding a spotlight to the background in Lightroom. And it's like, well, how can I do that? I don't have layers. Like, how can I do that? And again, we don't think about this stuff because we always think of Lightroom being a very flat world and it doesn't have layers. So how can we get behind the subject to do this? Well, let's, let's pick this one, for example. And let's um, zoom out. And let's say I want to put a, a spotlight behind her head. Okay. Well, I don't really have a spotlight tool. I don't really have a layer. I don't really have anything to do this with in Lightroom, but I do have masking and I do have a radial gradient. And if I pick the radial gradient, it's I'm doing it right over her face. So it's going to select her face as well. There we go. I'll make it nice and big. And then I'll go ahead and uh, adjust the exposure up. So there's my spotlight. And I can even change the color of it. But obviously that looks horrible on her. But remember what I just showed you. We have add and subtract. So here's a technique that blew my mind. I got to give, give my buddy Scott Kelby credit for, for telling me about this one. Subtract. Select subject. Now she's not affected by the spotlight. The spotlight's still there. You can change it to whatever you want. It's only affecting the background. You can make it whatever color you want. You can make it a real color by going down to color. And you can do whatever you want with it and it's not affecting her because you subtracted the subject from the radial gradient. So just, again, you gotta start thinking outside of the box if you wanna do this quick stuff in Lightroom and um, just remember that you always have add and subtract and clever ways to use add and subtract. So you could do all kinds of cool things with, and I can add as many of those as I need because they're just separate masks. So we can call this mask spotlight. All right. Oh man, I learned something new. Why are you saying, oh man, didn't you want to, Iris? <laughs> didn't you want to learn something new? Is that why you're here? All right, we'll try, wow, great technique. We'll try that out from Facebook user who didn't put their name in, in the um, restream chat. Okay, so uh, I'm just giving you a hard time. So, cool. All right, next up. Uh, let me look at my, my list so I don't forget anything. Light the background, we did that. Make the subject stand out, we did that. Okay, this is now we're gonna head over to Photoshop for an image that I shot this way on purpose. I shot it this way on purpose because I knew I would always be able to. <laughs> That's an excitement. Oh, man. Okay. You're forgiven. <laughs> She's like, oh, man. That was an excitement. Oh, man. Like, okay, I got it. I got the difference. Anyway, uh, let's go to this image here. Shot this image in studio. And this is one of those cases where if you're seamless paper, your whatever background you're on, it's not wide as you would like it. So I really wanted her as far over to the side as possible. And I wanted her to be pointing into the, into the frame. And I knew that all this, like there's a V flat here and the paper stops here. And I knew that would all be a problem. That's okay. I didn't care because I knew, and I hate to say this, I knew I could fix it in Photoshop, but in this case, it wasn't so much fix it in Photoshop, it was finish it in Photoshop. So I was like, man, as long as I get the subject doing what I want her to do, I can go ahead and finish that part that I want in Photoshop. All right, so let's go ahead. And this is not, this is not a Lightroom thing. Unfortunately, you cannot do this in Lightroom. So let's go to edit. Uh, we'll edit this image. Comes over to Command E or PC Control E. Comes over to, um, to Photoshop. And I'm going to show you a couple ways to do this. This way I like if you want to use the exact same background and extend it. So this is the extend background technique. Um, let's grab our rectangular marquee tool 
And let's go ahead and just make a, you're gonna make a sliver of a selection. Now, keep in mind that even though this is a white piece of paper behind her, because of the lighting, it's got shadows and grays at the bottom, at the top, off to the side. So just filling that area with white wouldn't do it because it wouldn't look right. It wouldn't be the same shadows at the top and bottom. Um, now, if I shot it high key where it's solid white, yep, yeah, I just fill that with white, it would work great. But in this case, I didn't. All right, so now let's go ahead and uh, write, or I'm sorry, I'm just gonna make this selection just of a sliver of this background. And then now that I've got that sliver selected, I'm gonna put that sliver on its own layer, Command J or PC Control J. So basically this is all I did. I just put that on its own layer and you can even see all the shadowing at the top, bottom and sides of that. And that's great. Now, simple technique with that sliver, free transform, Command T. And because free transform now always does it proportionally by default, this is one of those things. <laughs> it's okay, Facebook user, you forgot to give stream or, or uh, restream permission. It's okay. Uh, I'll forgive you this week, but next week you bet we better see your name. Anyway, um, because free transform does proportional scaling, this is one of those rare times I do want to hold down the shift key to stretch it. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and just pull it to the side. And then that's it. Hit enter and it blends perfectly like that that's why i wasn't worried about it i wasn't worried about oh i'm shooting off the background it won't be um you know i won't be able to fill that in easily yeah i can fill that in easily it takes a couple seconds and if you don't need that extra layer anymore you can always flatten it down but uh you got that extra layer which blends in greatly all right so now if i save that with the extra layer just in case It'll give it a second to finish saving. It's behind my head there. I see the progress bar. And layers always take longer. If I flatten it, it would have been faster. All right, close it. Head back to Lightroom. And it always puts that next to the original. So that's why I don't duplicate layers or any of that stuff. I don't have to because I'll always have the original to go back to if I need it. Okay, next up. Uh, oh, so that was one technique to extend the background. I'm going to show you another one that frustrates me because it's a it's a Instagram problem. So when you post a portrait in Instagram, for whatever reason, I still to this day do not understand, but for whatever reason, Instagram is forcing portraits to be a 4 by 5 slash 8 by 10 aspect ratio. So if I shoot close like this, and this isn't really that close. Like I'm really not tight on her feet, but I, I'm not leaving a lot of headroom. But if I shoot close like this with a standard digital portrait, if I were to post this to Instagram as is, I'd have to make this choice. Let me let me show you. Uh, I'm going to go crop. And I'm going to switch it to 4 by 5 8 by 10 which is what Instagram is at. So do I want her feet or do I want her head? Can't have both because Instagram is going to make me do this. It's going to make me, it's going to post it just like this. I can't, if it's wide, you can stretch it out as much as, almost as much as you want. But for whatever reason, tall images have to be four by five, eight by 10 at the most. And I, I it, in 2022, this is still the case, blows my mind. So I need more background. So this is another extend background technique to be able to post this. Uh, we should all switch to Vero. Unfortunately, the world isn't on Vero. I, I, I like Vero as much as the next person, but all that's on Vero right now are content creators, photographers. Your clients aren't there. Regular people aren't there. It's just, yeah, we do a whole talk on Vero. But anyway, that's the problem with Vero. All right, so how do I get this to work in Instagram? I can't do it in Lightroom because Lightroom doesn't give me any way to extend the background. Um, I can do this. So let's head over to Photoshop. And now that I'm in Photoshop, I'm going to go to the crop tool, just like we did before. And I'm gonna switch, I'm already on the four by 10, four by five, eight by 10 aspect ratio. But if you weren't, it would be on ratio and you would just pull down to it. And I'm going to enable one checkbox that's gonna make all the difference in the world. Um, yeah, Andrew says, I agree, it feel, Vero feels limited. It's not limited, the platform's great. It's just there aren't any, there's no, no one there. It's a ghost town as far as other people. Photographers are there, videographers are there, content creators are there, but 
not your customers, not the people that. So in other words, if you just want other photographers to see your photos, go post them on Bureau. You'll have other photographers looking at your photos. Uh, but if you want everyone else to see them, unfortunately, it's still Instagram. All right, so now we, we do content aware. Make sure that's checked in the crop tool so that now when I bring the crop tool out to make it that four by five, eight by 10, it's gonna leave that white space until I click okay. And once I click okay, it will use content aware fill to fill in the rest. So it even kept the shadow, it kept everything the way it was supposed to. And now if I were to save this and post it, it would, I wouldn't have to size it at all. It would fill, it would fit perfectly. You see her head, you see her feet, you see the bottom, the floor and everything else. And I have a little extra space there. Now, obviously that won't necessarily work on every background or everything. If there was a piece of furniture there, it could get weird as far as filling in the rest with a piece of furniture, but, or a prop or whatever. But if you have just a regular background, it doesn't have to be a solid color, but if you have a regular background with no objects that won't look weird repeated, then you could just do that and you will always be able to post your, your portrait images in the old standard of four by five, eight by 10 prints from a hundred years ago on this digital platform that doesn't accept them without cropping them any other way. Yeah, meta, way to, way to stay in the future. All right, anyway, uh, let's save this. Let's, it's saving, 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 saving. Saving, saving, saving. So, so Vero has the good stuff. Yeah, it does. It, it's, I, I'm not, I'm not, the platform's great. It's just the people aren't there. It's not a problem with the platform. All right, close this and head over to back to Lightroom. And there's the, there's the new one. So the new one's there. And now if I share this um, out, I don't have to worry about it not fitting or having to crop something off. Okay, next up, um, we did the uncrop. Let's go in, let's go back to Photoshop and let's build something from scratch. Let's build a product background, a, a background for a product that we're gonna use. All right, so let's go into new or new file. New file. Oh, it's over there. I'm like, how come that didn't pop up? There it is. New file. And I want to do a portrait and we'll just leave the defaults. It doesn't matter what size it is, but if you need a specific size, obviously you put it in. So we'll do our five by seven. No, we actually need a four by five, eight by 10, right? If we're going to post this on Instagram, uh, let's do eight by 10. All right, create. And uh, did I not do that? Why tall? Oh, it doesn't matter. Okay. Well, actually let's flip it over just for the sake of argument image. Uh, Actually, no, I want to, yeah, there we go. Okay. All right, so we have our empty background. And what we're gonna do is we're going to fill this background with a gradient. So we're gonna hit the letter G, which will take, it to, take us to a gradient. Uh, gradients by default are typically going to be on your foreground and background color. So I need to set those to what I want them to be, or just hit the letter D for defaults. That'll at least make them black and white, but that's still not what I want. I want, um, the color picker, which is on my other display. I want to have a darker gray as my foreground and my background to be a lighter gray. So I'm just picking different, different shades of gray. I'm not being very specific, just different shades of gray. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and fill this in. I want it, yeah, from the bottom to the top because the bottom's the darker one. There we go, so there's our gradient. And the next thing I'm going to do is um, add a color overlay. That way you can make the gradient whatever color you want. So let's go ahead and click uh, solid color. And we can pick whatever color we want. And we click OK. And then set that to... Um, set that to overlay. And that way it'll be just... We can always come back and change the color. So that was the reason for doing that. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a spotlight for it. So we're going to go ahead and create a new layer. And with our new layer, we're just going to use our elliptical marquee or elliptical marquee tool. And I'm not dead in the center, but I can always center it later. I'm going to hold down my option key so that it goes out from the center, my option or alt key. 
and my shift key to make a perfect circle. So there it is. If you don't need a perfect circle, then go. you can make an ellipse. It's okay. And now that I've done that, again, I'm on an empty layer, and I can move it around, get it where I want it. I can move it after the fact as well. I'm just going to fill that with white. So let's go to default, flip it to white, fill it with white. There it is, and deselect. So now i just got a big, big white oval on a layer by itself. Now that i got that big white oval on a layer by itself, that looks like a hole cut out of the background. And what I would prefer it to look like is just a soft light on the background. So to do that, um, Gabby, thank you. I, I appreciate you for saying that. Uh, let's go into um, Blur. So we're going to go to Filter. We're going to go to Blur. We're going to go to Gaussian Blur, which we've used for years and years and years. And the amount is over here. And you can make it what it has, as soft as you want. So that's hard. That's a little softer. That's a little softer. That's a little. That's a lot softer. So we're just blurring the crap out of this circle. Not that much. I don't want it to start extending into the top part there. We're just blurring the crap out of it. That's going to be our light. And we click OK. So again, that's just a, uh, we'll call it spotlight. All right. Spotlight. Light. All right, so now we got our spotlight layer. And again, you can lower the opacity of it. You can do whatever you want, make it not as obnoxious. And now to make our table for our product to sit on, think of a table with a spotlight in it. The, the light would be on the background, but it would also be down on the table as well. So to make this work or trick to do this, we're going to grab our rectangular marquee tool again. And we're going to just make a selection of the bottom half, something like that. It doesn't have to be perfect, but something like that. And we're going to take that um, and put all of that selection on its new on its own layer. So just Command J, and it will make its own layer of just that. So now we use our Move tool. So hit the letter V as in Victor, and just move it down. And that will be our table. And we can lower the opacity of that as well because maybe the reflection wouldn't be as strong on the table, but we got our table in place. All right, next up, we're going to bring in our product. Somewhere in here, I have a product shot that I want. There it is, bring in an iPhone. And we'll go ahead and drop that in, size it down, put that right on top of the table there, maybe down a little bit more, and scale it down a little bit. There we go. Something like that. It's right in the center, great. And then we're going to duplicate that layer and free transform it and flip it vertically so it's upside down and pull it down. Just hold down the shift key so we pull it straight down. So this will be our reflection. So we can call this uh, iPhone reflection or product reflection. And now that we got a reflection, well, that looks too much like a copy, not a reflection. So we're going to take that reflection, we're going to add a layer mask to it. And now that we've added a layer mask, we're going to go to our gradient tool once again. And it's black to white by default because that's our, our foreground and background colors are black to white. And we're just going to pull up. And you it might take you a few times to get it just the way you want it. So I'm going to undo, pull up right from the bottom up. That's getting to be more like I want it. And then maybe lower the opacity of it so it looks more like just a slight reflection on the table. And that's how you can create a easy background for a product that you photographed that you didn't like the background you photographed it on. So building a background from scratch, building a nice table or platform or thing to sit it on can be done just like that. All right, um, I could save this, but I don't really need it after in the next 20 minutes, I won't care about it, so I'm not going to save it, but if you needed that, you'd save it. All right, next up, let's go ahead and just simply close this. Don't save. And let's make another new one. And this time, and I keep doing that. Hang on, let me, let me fix this. New, let's make it tall. There we go. And now let's uh, let's fill this one with black. Let's drop another product in it. There we go. 
I cut out a necklace earlier from Adobe Stock. There we go. Ooh, that's already looking pretty sweet. Maybe make it bigger. Something like that. Yeah, so it kind of bleeds off the edges there. And then uh, we got our necklace. We got our background. We're just going to make a new layer in between. And our new layer in between, we're going to do that same kind of technique where we use a, um, a elliptical marquee. And we're just going to come down and maybe do something like that. Where it's underneath it, like it would be on the surface itself. We're on that new layer, so now we can fill that with white. And now that it's been filled with white, we can deselect it and blur the crap out of it. That's a technical term. Blur the crap out of it. If you need more blur, get more blur. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. There we go. And yeah, we can blur more of it. Uh, yeah, there we go. That's kind of what I'm looking for. It's kind of like that light on the table. And again, lower the opacity of it. Or you can use a blend mode, maybe. And kind of just make a hint of a light underneath it. Something like that. Because again, you don't want to overpower the necklace. They should be looking at the necklace. But this way, you get just kind of that subtle, professional looking, like, oh, you, you lit the table so perfectly. Oh, my God. I can't believe you did it that way. Like, you get that. You, that's what you want. And maybe you lower the opacity even a little bit more. Yeah. Something like that. So it's just enough. So all that was, it's a black background, the product on it, cut out from a white background or whatever background that was originally on. I can't even remember. And then just ellipse, filled with white, blurred the crap out of it, and lower the opacity of it just so it gives a hint of light under it. So it's just not a gold necklace on a black background. It looks more like a professional shop. Okay. Um, <laughs> we did that. We did that. All right. Now we're going to get into some removing the background. We're going to create, so we're going to create some more backgrounds after the fact, but if I run out of time, I don't want to run out of time before I do these remove background techniques. All right, so let's uh, close this one. And don't save. Diamonds are my best friend. Yes, they are. All right, now let's go back um, to this image. So this is an image I photographed of a neighbor. It was my neighbor's, prom, my neighbor's daughter's prom. Um, so I took her in studio. Uh, photographed her in her nice gown and uh, got some of the lighting equipment up there side there. I'm not worried about that. But uh, with that seamless background and lit properly, it just looks like she's just floating right there on a piece of paper. And that's great because that gives me the ability now to put this on any background I want. So let's uh, take this into Photoshop. Great. And um, we can go ahead and just quickly fix that because it's going to bug me unless I don't fix it. Let's just quickly fix this little piece here. Okay, that's fixed. Now let's go get the background I want to use for this. I went to Adobe Stock and I just simply said, I just simply searched for elegant staircase. <laughs> like, because she's got such an elegant gown on. I, I was like, oh man, I bet this would look great if I had an elegant staircase to photograph her on. And this was the one I found. So this is it. I was like, oh my God, that's awesome. That would look great for her. So I could, now this is the, the thing. If you want this to return to Lightroom, edit it with the staircase, then you need to edit the staircase onto her image versus putting her on this image. Because if I put her on this image and save it, it won't go back to Lightroom because it wasn't in Lightroom to begin with. So just keep that in mind. If you're doing your compositing, where you start, which image you start it with, that's the image you need to be doing the work on if you want it to go back to, to Lightroom. If you don't care, then it doesn't matter. All right, so what I could do is now that I know that's the background I want, I could go in and I could simply drag that in. And it's obviously a lower resolution than what she is, but no problem. Photoshop's really good at sizing things up these days and not making it look horrible. Great. And now that I've got that, I'm going to... Uh, uncrop the image to make that fit. So let's go to crop. Let's turn off the aspect ratio. And let's clear it. So that way I'm not bound by any aspect ratio. And that way now I can see the image as I'm uncropping. 
and we're going to uncrop all the way over here. So that way I'm just basically resizing this image so we can see the whole staircase. Okay, so now we can see the whole staircase and she's on a layer underneath it and there she is. Okay, so this like, you know how sometimes you're like, you spend hours looking for an image and it's like a, until you find the right one and then all of a sudden, sometimes you find the first one immediately. <laughs> this was the, I got lucky and found the right image immediately. When you see this finished image, you're gonna, like people I showed this to were like, where was that staircase? Like, where did you shoot this? Because well, so, they just couldn't believe that this was a composite. So um, here we go. All right, so uh, I'm not sizing her down or anything yet. I'll figure that out once I get once I get rid of her white background. So now that we got this here, I'm going to go ahead and she's on a layer by herself. I'm just going to go ahead and say select subject, which obviously should select her. And it did. Ooh, it didn't do a great job, though. Hang on. Wait, did I have something else selected here? What am I doing wrong? Did I do select subject? Normally it does a much better job of selecting her than that. There we go. I don't know what I had the first time, but that's her. Okay, so now we got a select subject. We got her. We're gonna go simply to select and mask, which is after I get, select and mask is one of those th modes you work in with at least some kind of selection. Once you make a selection, then you're going to select a mask. So my easiest selection when I'm working with people, select subject, because they're usually the subject of the photo. And then I can go ahead and, I, I didn't even do anything yet. Like I just said select and mask and it already looks amazing. Now, the size is off. Um, perspective is great, which is the key to any successful composite. The lighting's great because I already shot her on a white background. The staircase is white, just happened to look out that way. But there are some things I would take care of first. So first of all, let's zoom in and see what it did on her hair. Like there's still some pieces of her, that gray in her hair. Now I could get away with it because it, it looks okay. Like, but I know it's there. So it's bugging me that that's there. All right, so let's uh, move this down a bit. Let's look up here. So you always want to make sure everything is there before you start saying I'm done. Like make sure all, like do a, a w walk around the image, the edges of the image to make sure it's all there and it's all the way it's supposed to be. Okay, so the hair coming down the back got has some of that background in it. So we're gonna do a couple things. Um, and again, multiple techniques will, like you just pick the one you like best. It's kind of, you don't need them all, just depends on what you wanna do. So what I typically do right off the bat, and it fixes, probably 70% of any issues like that where part of the background is left over, is even though this was a gray background and even though decontaminate colors is for removing color out of a background that didn't wasn't there, it still works pretty well. So if I just say decontaminate colors, and um, so here's before, I don't know if that made any difference or not, here's after. Okay, looks about the same. But then what I would do is go in, now that I've done that, and grab the um, Refine Edge tool. Smaller brush is better for the Refine Edge tool, I've learned by experience. And then just go in and start painting the hair. And that will like just paint out that background. So you start from where the background used to be and paint into the area that you want removed. And that's, that did pretty much take care of the issue. And go in here, just go up a little closer. And that will recalculate the mask taking out that um, hair. And I think this is cut out already, but I would start out here and go into her, under her arm there. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if that made it better or worse. I think that made it worse. Let me undo that. Yeah, I like it better without it. Okay, um, hair is already looking good there, looking good everywhere else. I don't see any issues with the dress. All right, so now we worry about size. So let's zoom out. She's too tall for that staircase. When you start doing compositing like this, you have to re you have to remember you have to you have to take into account distance. So for example, we're only maybe three foot three feet in front of that staircase. And when you look back at the staircase, what are there? Ten stairs, eight stairs there she wouldn't be that tall in front of a staircase that had eight stairs. She'd be a lot shorter this close to the camera and even shorter further back. So 
We'll click OK on this. This will output the mask to a new layer. So now we have the original and we have the new layer. And now we can go to that layer and now we can do free transform. So free transform, we want to scale her down to where it would look about right. So see, that's about right. That's about the right size for her. And again, you can make it a little taller, a little shorter, but where she was was way too tall for where she is in perspective to the staircase going back. So that's gonna take some judgment on your part. It's gonna take some practice on your part to kind of get those perspectives right and to judge and think about, okay, if someone's really standing there, would they be that big? Would they be that little? If they're too little, you need to make them bigger. If they're too big, you need to make them smaller. So um, you just gotta, gotta play with it until you get it right. So I, I don't remember where I ended up with this. I, I think I was about right here. I may, maybe even made her a little smaller than that. Maybe something like that. Nah, because then it starts to get too small. So again, yeah, I went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until I ended up with something about like that. All right, so now again, because we're doing this on the same image that um, we started with earlier, and I can get rid of this extra layer, by the way, because um, we do have that layer with the mask, so it's all there. Save it. Uh, because I started with the layer, I'm sorry, because I edited the image that came from Lightroom, now this is the image that will go back to Lightroom, as opposed to putting her on the staircase image. So now when I close this and close the staircase and head back to Lightroom Classic, uh, there she is with the staircase. And this is the before and that's the after. And of course, if you need to make any lighting adjustments or anything like that on her, you would do that um, and make those adjustments. But again, perspective, if she was really standing there, how would that look? And it's just the dress flows, everything flowed perfectly. That was just one of those lucky things that just worked out. All right, next up, um, let's do another one. Let's do this one, Krista. Now, uh, another trick. Uh, so she was photo, or Krista was photographing gray. Uh, Elise was photographed on white. And it just looks kind of gray because I didn't light the background that well. And I wasn't trying to. If you know going in, you're going to do a composite. Like if you know before the person even steps in front of the camera, I'm going to cut this image out and put it on something else. Then a gray background is your best friend. Not white, not black, not green, not orange, not any other color. Here's why. Because any other color, besides maybe black, but any other color is going to reflect onto your subject. So if you shot her on a, or him or her on a yellow background or a green background, even green screen, like you think green screen, like I'm on a green screen now, it cuts out perfectly for video. But for photography, that green is reflected onto your subject and it's hard as hell to get out and make it look right. So just if you do yourself a favor, this background color is called Fashion Gray. It's by uh, Savage. So I don't work for Savage. But Savage Fashion Gray is your best friend if you're going to do composites. Any other color gray will probably work, but that gray is like just money for doing um, for doing compositing. All right, so let's go back to Krista here. Let's edit this image. Um, oh, wrong image selected. Sorry. Don't say. Nope. Okay. Wrong image selected. Go back here. There we go. Krista selected now. And we'll edit Krista and same kind of thing there. We're going to put Krista on a different background. So let's go get the background I want to use. I want to put Krista on a couple different backgrounds just to show the difference. All right, here's a medical background because she's got a medical outfit on. All right, we're going to use this one. And we're going to use something totally different. We're going to use... <laughs> We're going to use, I know it's here, maybe I don't know it's here. We're going to use, ah, oh, we'll use this. Okay, it's close enough. All right, we'll use this. Yep, that's what I want to use. Okay, great. So we'll, we'll make this one big enough as well. And we'll go ahead and size this one, or we'll turn this one off for now. So we've got um, the medical background with our doctor. And we want to put the doctor on top. So we can't move the background up until we turn it into a layer. 
The easiest way to turn it into a layer is click the lock icon. Now it's a layer. Now we can move it up. And we'll move it up all the way, actually. Um, oh, did I not move it up? There we go. Didn't let go. All right, so it's now on top of everything, and that's cool because that's what I want. I want to be able to cut her out and have her be on top of everything. I'm going to do the same thing. Select subject, her layer selected. And I'm going to um, select a mask. And we're going to do this one quickly because there's something else I want to get to. And we only got like five minutes left. Select a mask. And at first glance, it looks great. But you got to remember, there's some gray in there from that gray background and, and interspersed in her hair. And you could get away with it on this background. But uh, you may not be able to get away with it on the other background. So let's go ahead and zoom in. And same thing. We're going to say uh, decontaminate colors. And look at that. All right, just by turning on decontaminate color, it did a great job. But I'm gonna show you the best trick in the world. No matter what you do in this dialog box, when you're done, watch this. Click OK, output to a new layer, zoom out, and, or actually no, zoom in so you can see it. And let me turn off that, turn this layer on. So see, there's still some of that gray in there, so I go back in, double click on the mask and, and paint that out. That's why we use different backgrounds to see if it's really okay. And it, of course, if it was on going to be on that medical background, I wouldn't worry about it. But on this background, I would. So again, we're just going to paint some of that out of this. And all right. So now when you do this painting, you, you might end up with some blurs like that. Let me undo it. That was kind of a bad one. And that's okay because this trick is going to save you from now on. Click OK. And, and we throw that one away. Let me throw that one away. All right, so you got your, your layer with the new cutout. All you're gonna do, and, and here, let me position the hair so you can see it better. All you're gonna do is Command J. Duplicate the layer. When you, see how it filled it out more? Now, I didn't get all the gray, I didn't even touch the gray at the top. So we go back and make sure that was all gone too. But just undo, just duplicating your layer will fill it out more. All right, so, um, and again, that's not the background she's going on. That's the background she's going on, so it works out fine. But keep that in mind. Clean up any of, any of that gray in the background, in the hair. It's much easier to do with the brush and decontaminate colors and duplicate the layer when you're done. All right, um, just to prove the point, let's go back to this. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, yeah, there he is. I pull this guy in. All right, blonde, blonde hair guy with lots of strands of hair. Select subject. Oh, first, lock it in. Select subject. Select a mask. Uh, decontaminate colors. Output to a new layer which will decontaminate colors will automatically do that. Great. Did a great job. Click OK. And then watch this. Command J. See how it filled in? Undo. Command J. It just fills in those edges a little bit more. Duplicate the layer. You can flatten it down. Whatever you want to do after that. Okay. Done with this image. Our last image. Three minutes left. Don't save. And we're going to go into um, back to Lightroom. We're going to grab this image. Uh, edit, select a mask, select subject first, select a mask. It's not going to be a whole lot of cleanup I need to do on this one. Select a mask. Great. Um, decontaminate colors. I'll put to a new layer. Awesome. And then what, where do I want my new layer to be? What do I want my background to be in this case? I don't want to use the old background. So I'm going to create a new layer. Actually, I don't even have to create a new layer. What's new in this version of Photoshop? is uh, the substance materials have made it over. So under your window menu, you have a new materials panel. And the new materials panel allows you to go in, and these are usually done for 3D, but you can use them even on nothing. You can use them on a flat image, you can use them on anything you want, because it's gonna generate a layer with that. Uh, so depending on what you have it on, uh, we're gonna get the layer that we, you know, we, we can put a color behind it, by the way, as well. So let's go ahead and do that. New layer. Um, let's fill it with uh, any color. Actually, we'll sample the color from her outfit. 
there we go option there we go so it kind of fills it in so the, the holes are there uh, filled in with a color click whatever you want and it will create a texture using any of these uh, 3d materials and so play around with them get the one you want you also have all the controls down here and by the way it's, it's stacking them up that's why it's starting to look weird let's get rid of some of these all right let's do this one more time there let's make a new one hold on let me throw these away first there we go now let's make a new one so you can play around with these and again use all the controls all the things to kind of create a background that didn't exist all right last but not least in my last few seconds i'm not going to have time to do it right but let's say uh let's turn this her off for a second let's drop in a we're going to make a floor so we're going to drop in a piece of wood we're going to scale it up and we're out of time but what you're going to do on this is you're going to change change the distort and you're going to basically drop the wood down to where it would be a floor for your subject you're going to stretch this out you're going to stretch this out and you can make a floor out of just a background like that all right so now you got a stage or a floor to put something else on as well i'm out of time folks so hopefully you got something out of this cheers everyone stay tuned for the daily creative challenge and uh i got them all in this time under the wire cheers everyone stay tuned Daily Creative Challenge. Bye, everybody. Have a great weekend.